Hi there, welcome back to How to Write Science Fiction That Doesn't Suck with Rick Partlow. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded one of these videos, and part of that is I went to Yellowstone, as is my annual tradition in the spring. This time I went for a little bit longer than usual. I was there for two and a half weeks, uh, and he did the break. <laughs> and uh, after that, when I came back, I had my daughter's high school graduation, and then I had a pre-order to deal with for my Holy War Book 1 uh, Genesis that came out May 25th. So Book 2 had, had a pre-order for June 25th, and I had to get that done and sent to the editors. So I was very busy for a little while and a little bit, I don't know, you know, nostalgic and emotional about my daughter graduating high school. She's going off to college in the summer semester, so... It's been hard to get get my uh, thoughts together to get back on here, but now I want to get another video out. And the video that I wanted to do today was on the rules and when to break them. Now, you may or may not have heard of the rules of fiction writing. There's a lot of them, and it seems like there's more every year. Uh, I, I'll touch on a few of the major ones you, you may or may not have heard of. There's never open a book with the weather. You know, the old uh, cliche, it was a dark and stormy night, that kind of thing. Not supposed to do that. Don't mention the weather in the opening of the book. Avoid prologues. Um, prologues have gone in and out of fashion. Right now they seem to be out. Um, except perhaps in tr trad published uh, fantasy novels. I see prologues a lot. Other than that, not. Um... Avoid non-standard dialogue tags. Uh, in other words, don't use any dialogue tags except for said or asked. Maybe exclaimed. Avoid adverbs. You know, uh, the the rule is supposed to be that you need if you have to say he ran quickly, then you're not using your vocabulary good enough. It should be he sprinted, he rushed, instead of using an adverb. And um, one of the last ones, don't head hop. If you're using third person limited point of view and you're telling a scene from the point of view of a certain person, you can't jump to another person in that same scene. You have to break the scene, go to the other person, then come back to the original. Now, all these rules are in place for good reason, but none of them is immortal. None of them has been around forever, and they, they have changed just in the last 20 or 30 years, and they may change again. <coughs> now, I want to talk about why it's important to know these rules before you break them. Because you may think that if you break these rules by accident that nobody will be able to tell that you didn't do it on purpose, but they will. Not everybody will, but enough people will that they'll mention it in, in your reviews, in critiques. So you need to be aware of when you're breaking the rules and do it purposefully and do it as masterfully as you can. Let's talk about a couple of them in particular. My favorite is the non-standard dialogue tags. Um, it's fine for people to say, oh, if you say said, it's invisible. And it may be invisible, but it's not inaudible. And with audiobooks taking over a big section of the market as they have been, you're going to probably, if you're successful with your book, see it made into an audiobook. And believe me, although your, your mind may skip over said when you see it on a page, when the narrator says it over and over and over like 20 times in one page, you do notice it, and it's annoying as heck. So don't do that. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, it says invis it's not invisible. Don't use it over and over in the same page, the same section. If you don't want to use non-standard dialogue tags, and I understand that, like... Uh, I would, I would just not use dialogue tags at all. I would use an action cue like, 
you know, that's not why we're here, period, close quotation. John sat back in his chair and rubbed his head tiredly. Use an action cue to show who you're, who's saying the words. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna not use non-standard dialogue tags, then you need to not use the standard ones over and over. It does get annoying, and people will notice it, especially in an audiobook. Uh, personally, I don't think there's anything. I, I know it's it's considered a cardinal sin to do things like. I don't know why we're here, comma, close quote, John shrugged, because you don't shrug words, but yeah, that's a rule, and editors will jump on you about that, but to be honest, nobody cares. The readers don't care. The readers aren't going to notice that. The readers aren't going to say, oh my God, you're a horrible writer, because John shrugged those words. No, they don't care. Um... That's the one thing about all these rules. They're all rules. They will all get you jumped on by editors if you break them. But in all honesty, all honesty, if your story is compelling, if your characters are engaging, if the readers are enjoying what they're reading, nobody's going to care if you break these rules. Nobody. Uh, the only one that might be an exception is head hopping because you could confuse the, the reader. By, they, by them not knowing whose point of view the scene is from. But as far as using adverbs, using non-standard dialogue tags, uh, all these other rules that are out there, you know, if you tell a good story, nobody's going to care. So that's getting away with breaking them. Uh, they are there for a reason, however, because if you use adverbs a lot, then you are going to, it's going to get noticeable eventually. Um, I think adverbs are fine. I know, I think it was Stephen King that said those shoe adverbs, but I think adverbs are fine in moderation. Um, as long as you don't use them over and over again in too short of a period of time, I think they're fine. I think they can be done well. I also think that trying, spending your time trying to come up with different verbs to describe the same action instead of using an adverb is a waste of your time in writing. I mean, yeah, he sprinted, he rushed, he, you know, his, his heels kicked up dirt as he sprinted across the field. And, you know, is, is more colorful and more visual than he ran quickly. But... Perhaps in that one instance you're using it, how he ran and the visualization of how he ran is not important to the scene. Maybe it's a distraction. In that case, he ran quickly is fine. There's, as long as you're not saying he ran quickly and talked loudly and you know, painted colorfully all in the same sentence, you know, and using all these adverbs close together where people notice, as long as you're not doing that, if you use them sparingly, I think it's fine. Um, I, and there's a lot of famous and very successful authors that have done it, and they get away with it because people love their books and love their characters, and they don't care about those kind of things. My dog doesn't care. You can see him back there. He doesn't care if I use adverbs at all as long as I give him food. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, rules, the rules are there for a reason, but they are not invi inviolable. Um, and they've changed very recently. Like 50 years ago, head hopping wasn't considered a sin. Uh, people used third person omniscient a lot, and they don't use it anymore. I understand why they don't, because I think it has to do with how we get our entertainment. More people get their entertainment visually nowadays, and they're used to seeing things from the point of view of a single character and jumping in and out of different characters without a scene break or some sort of indication that you're doing it gets confusing. It didn't used to be that way, though. Prologues used to be a lot more popular than they are now. 
I remember a lot of older books that had prologues. Um, but there is one rule that I think is important enough that you should not violate it, that it is a rule that should be followed every time, and that's anything you think the reader is going to skip through, don't write it. Don't waste your time writing boring crap that the reader is going to go... Let me give you an example of this. Uh, Tom, Tom Clancy's book, The Sum of All Fears, great book, incredibly successful, had a movie made out of it, so I'm not knocking the book, but at that point in his career, Tom Clancy was, was a big enough of a name that the publisher was not going to put an editor on him and tell him, oh, you need to cut this part out. No, Tom Clancy didn't get edited. So when Tom Clancy put a whole chapter in The Sum of All Fears, something like 20 pages, I want to say. I mean, I don't have it in front of me. I, I, I'd have to go dig it out of my, my bookcase. 20 pages detailing the microseconds between the detonation and ignition of a nuclear bomb. All of it in technical terms and just a total info dump giving you every technical detail of what happens between the time you push the button and this bomb detonates. Nobody cut that out. And I'll tell you what I did when I got the book and I was a huge, huge Tom Clancy fan and I loved the book. I got to that point, I read the first couple pages, and I'm like, and I, I, where's the end of this chapter? I, I looked at it, just skipped the whole chapter. I didn't care. I got the idea. The bomb didn't go off the way it was supposed to. You know, that could have been a, a paragraph, you know? Now, it's Tom Clancy, and his book sold, you know, millions and millions of copies, so nobody cared. But I skipped that part, and I know a lot of people probably skipped that part. And you know who else should have skipped that part? Tom Clancy should have skipped that part. And if he wasn't Tom Clancy, he would have skipped that part because some editor would have said, what the hell are you doing? Why are you putting this huge technical info dump in a whole chapter 20 pages long? Uh, he did not, but none of us are Tom Clancy. None of us are likely to be Tom Clancy. And none of us should do that ever. Don't put in stuff that you think your most of your readers will skip. It's just a courtesy to the reader. Uh, I find if I'm writing something and I'm bored writing it, I think the readers are likely going to be bored reading it, and I should probably skip that. And you may think, oh, no, I need this to make the book longer. No, no, do something else. That's a rule that's there for a reason. Don't write stuff that the readers are going to be bored by. And that's one you can't you can't violate. And if you do it on purpose, then you're a butthole, honestly, because you're making your readers readers who are loyal to you and read your books. You're making them suffer and be bored when you could have skipped that part. Um, going back to prologues, whether or not you have a prologue, it's a personal choice. Uh, the reason that a lot of people don't like it is because if you are trying to get your book traditionally published, you're going to be sending an excerpt of your book to the editors you know, who are going to decide whether or not to offer you a contract. And if you send them a prologue, most of the time they're not even going to read it. <coughs> they're going to say, this is a prologue. What the hell am I doing with this? And if you are publishing yourself or being published by an indie pub, uh, press, in Amazon, the first thing that people are going to do after they see your cover and say, oh, that's a nice cover, and they read your blurb and say, oh, that sounds interesting, they'll do the look inside, and they'll look at the first few pages of your book. And if the first few pages of your book are a prologue that involve people who are not the main characters doing something that's not attached to the main plot, well, guess what? You've just lost that potential buyer. So that's why a lot of people don't use prologues. Um, there are exceptions to that. As I said, a lot of epic fantasies have prologues. That might be a, tra a trad published thing where a lot of 
a lot of the work is done by people who already have contracts and already have success. Don't know. It makes sense. <clears throat> there is one exception to that rule about prologues, is if you're writing a long series, in the later books of the series, you could put a prologue in because A, the people are already committed to the series. They know they want to read this, so it's not like you're going to lose them. And B, it's a long series with lots of stuff that came before, so you may want to put in a prologue that explains some of what came before just to catch people up because they may not have read your book for months, so the previous books. So that's another rule that you can break in, under certain circumstances. But for a book one or a book that you're trying to sell your book or series to a publisher, avoid prologues. Um, Story-wise, since this is mostly a story and craft podcast, prologues tend to slow down uh, the beginning of a book. And if it's the first book in a series, you might not want to slow it down at the beginning because you're trying to get people interested and doing something with conflict and danger and risk and action in the beginning is a good way to get people interested. All right, well, this has been kind of a short video, uh, but I think it's been to the point. Um, just on a personal note, I had a great time in Yellowstone, except I was sick as a dog the first two or three days because my daughter gave me a chest cold. Uh, and I took it with me, and it was miserable. But after I got through that, I had a great time. I saw lots and lots of animals, got lots and lots of pictures. If you want to see pictures of, of the wildlife, I saw I'm a wildlife photographer by hobby and passion, and you can go to Facebook and look up Rick Partlow Photography. And I don't make any money off this. This is just so I have a place to put the pictures. You can look it up there. Uh, all the pictures from all my Yellowstone trips are there in Alaska and other places I've been. Thousands of pictures. Uh, if you like wildlife, bears, wolves, foxes, whatever, it's a good place to uh, find them. Or you can go, I have a PBase account, which is a little bit harder to navigate, but it's pbase.com backslash R-I-K-W-R-I-T-E-R, -E and that's all my photographs as well. So if you like wildlife and nature and the outdoors and photography, you can check it out if you want. Um, I find that, as an aside having to do with writing, taking a break from writing for a couple of weeks once or twice a year really helps. Uh, in this case, I might have planned poorly because I had a book that I was about 90,000 words into it wound up being 108,000 words, and I stopped writing it because I can't write while I'm on these trips because I'm driving hundreds of miles a day, or if I'm not driving, I am standing out outside, you know, waiting on animals with my camera on a tripod, or hiking, carrying my camera. And by the end of the day, and this is in spring, in fall it's different, but in spring, the days last, you know, from... 5.30 to 9. So you're out all day long. And by the time I get back to my motel room or if I'm camping, if I get back to my campsite, I'm just dead tired. And I can't, I don't have the mental energy to write. So there was no way I was going to write while I was there. So I got back after 17 days. And getting back into the story that I had not written for 17, for 17 straight days was difficult. And it took me till uh, three days ago, four days ago to finish it. So it was, it was a near thing because, like I said, they have to get this edited and formatted, and it comes out June 25th. So I, I kind of put a little bit of a rush job on, my, on the publisher there. Sorry about that, Rhett and Steve. Um, Try not to do it again. But uh, honestly, though, taking a break from writing helps you appreciate it more. Because by the end, I was, like, missing it. And when, you know, when you're facing deadlines and you're just banging out the words, sometimes it's like, this is too much like work. But if you take a little time off, you realize, I miss it. I want to get back to it. 
So that's another piece of advice, uh, not, not a rule, but I think it should be a rule, is take a break once in a while, and it'll make you appreciate writing more than if you just force yourself to do it for every day of the year until you're done writing your book. So, okay, I will let you go. Um, my name is Rick Partlow. If you want to look up my Amazon page, or if you want to go on Facebook, look up facebook.com backslash duty on our planet. That is my fa author Facebook page, or rickpartlow.com is my blog. Thank you, and I will see you next time.